thank you. How are you? How are you? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So let's uh, first of all, let's talk about your new compilation album, Hits. So why did you decide to include new music in this compilation album? Well, we... Um... First off, I think that, that any time you do like a collective works album, nowadays you, you tend to put some new songs on there because obviously uh, most of your fans have heard the songs that you're going to put as a collection. So, you know, you got to put some new music on there. Um, but for us, really, it was, it was driven more by just, we've just got so much music to make. You know, while we were on the road back in 2016, while we were touring on, on Prayers for the Damned and Prayers for the Blessed, we just, we were constantly coming up with new ideas. So as soon as we got off the road, um, off of those tours, we immediately went right into the studio and started recording again um, because we knew that eventually we were going to be doing this hits package. Uh, so we wanted to have some new material to give to our fans. We wanted to make it an enjoyable album experience, not only for those fans that already existed of 6AM, but something to introduce new fans to it as well. Um, so that was really what drove us to immediately go into the studio. But then Nikki wrote another book. <laughs> And of course, being 6AM, we've got to write a song or a song soundtrack to the book so that's what we do with verse 21 and, and we just had some blast doing it so about three months ago uh when nikki had gotten his book to a point where it was just about done uh we were able to get together and uh and write the first 21 the song and um it's just been a great experience putting this whole package together just been a fantastic experience yeah and did you, didn't you consider a uh, making a full album for as a soundtrack for the first 21 like you did previously with the heroin diaries You know, we never really thought about that. Um, I think that probably had, had COVID not happened, we, we, you know, because we would have probably been out doing some touring or, or doing other recordings, that thought may have occurred to us. But I think just because of the way that everything has unfolded, um, it really seemed important to us to, to write one song for it, something that could... Uh, be as nostalgic as the book is itself. Um, so it's a good question, but I don't think it ever really occurred to us to do a full album on this one. <laughs> yeah. And how did you, to, did, you, did you guys do to uh, choose the songs that would be part of hits? Because, of course, you had many great songs. So how did you do to uh, choose the best? Well, a few different ways. Number one, obviously, calling it hits means that we had to put a few of our radio hits on there. So that was kind of an easy one. You know, Life is Beautiful and Lies of the Beautiful People, things like that. Um, but then what we did was we talked to our fans, and we looked at what our fans were reacting to, uh, not only uh, in streaming, but also live in concert, because there were certain songs that we did live in concert that might not have been radio hits, but really got the crowd going. So those songs uh, found their way onto the, onto the Hits album, as well as just fan favorites. So it was a lot of fun to put it together for that very reason, because number one, it was retrospective. We were able to go back and look at our entire body of work and kind of be reminded of what we were going through at the time. What were we thinking when we recorded this song? And what was going on in the world when we wrote and recorded this song? So that was fun, but then also learning what songs really resonated with our fans was an important part of, of discovering how 6AM has evolved over the years, the band that we've turned into. So it was a great experience, and I think that it was, um, I think we all learned a lot from it. Yeah. So, so you say that the, the opinion of the fans is always important for the band? Always. Always it is. Um, And in our case, it's been especially meaningful because ever since the Heroin Diary soundtrack, our fans have, have come to us and, and talked about how our music has affected them, how it has saved somebody's life or how it has changed somebody's life for the better. And, and it's just been an amazing experience throughout the years to be able to speak directly with fans and hear those stories, hear, the, hear those, you know, 
amazing stories of how our music has affected somebody. So yes, uh, the fans' reaction has always been at the center of what's important to 6 a.m. So do you say, are you saying that it's important to always have a, like a message that can change people's life in your music? I don't think it's always important. I think it has been important for 6 a.m. You know, I think it depends, it depends on what kind of band you are. Uh, 6 a.m. is the kind of band that would, um, that would always choose to, uh, to dive into the poetry of it, into the lyrics, and, and, and have messages that resonate and have layers of meaning to them, you know. But I don't think it's essential for all bands to do that. I mean, you know... I have a lot of favorite bands out there that don't really go that deep in lyrics, but there's something else that I like about them. So in our case, yes, it was very, very important. The messaging has always been important. To this day, the messaging on our new song, uh, The First 21, is, is an important message um, about reflecting back on your life and, 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 and owning everything about your life, accepting who you are and the things that you've done and being okay with it and, and apologizing for it if apologies need to be made or embracing it if, you know, and celebrating it. So, uh, yeah, messaging has always been right at the center of what 6AM is all about. Yeah. The first single for this his album was Skin. So why did you decide to use it as a first single of this new album? Well, what we did is it's, it's a different version of Skin than the original version, which was just piano and vocals. That was on the uh, This Is Gonna Hurt album. But that song, uh, going back to what we were talking about, fan reactions, that song has always been one of our most popular songs as far as fans go. Um, but we couldn't really put it on the radio as just a piano ballad because a lot of rock stations just wouldn't be able to make it fit in their format. So we did a more, kind of what I considered a more rock accessible version of it that had the heavy guitars and the drums and all of that. And it really lent itself to that version very beautifully. Um, so we just wanted to, to shine a different light on the song so that possibly it could find a new home in streaming or in people's hearts, you know, and, uh, And it was a lot of fun doing that. And I think that version turned out very true to the original, but gives you something new to listen to. Yeah. And you have been present in the rock scene since many years ago as a musician. So how do you see the, the rock of today with the new bands of that? What's your opinion of it? You know, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and I, would, I probably would answer it differently about every three months. <laughs> you know, it, it kind of depends on, on where I'm at in my life. And, you know, as a music producer, of course, I have to pay very close attention to what is going on in modern music. But as a music fan, which I'll take that part of the question first. As a music fan, I don't really love a lot of what's going on in, in modern active rock music today. I think it's too overproduced. I'm guilty of overproducing rock songs myself. Um, I really like the simplicity of what rock music was like in the 70s and, and even in the early 80s. Um, but as a producer, I love the stuff that's going on because technologically it's, it's, very, um, it's very exciting, it's very innovative, it's imaginative. Um, so There's two answers for you. As a, as a person, I don't really love it that much. I, let's put it this way. When I, when I go to put music on to just listen and enjoy it, I almost always will be listening to 70s or 80s playlists. I very seldom listen to anything modern. But as a producer, like I said, I've got to listen to that modern stuff all the time. And like you said, you're a producer, so You have worked previously with artists like Scorpions, Motley Crue, Hailstorm, even Hammerfall. So is there any artist that you would like someday work with? You know, it's been such an amazing journey for me. I've, 
I've worked with some incredible artists over the years, and I've made some very dear friends over the years. You mentioned Hammerfall. Those guys, I just I consider them close friends and just love them to death. So I'm grateful to not only have been involved in their career, but also just to be able to call them friends. And a lot of the artists that I've worked with over the year, you mentioned Hailstorm, Papa Roach, Motley, all those guys. It's a big family of, of just really amazing people that I'm, I'm grateful to know. Um, as far as artists that I have not worked with that I would like to, I'm at the end of my career. I'm at the, I'm at, I'm ready to go enjoy other things about life. And so I don't really think that often about, oh man, I'd like to get into the studio with that guy or this guy. I've already had so many amazing experiences that I could spend the rest of my life just reflecting on them and be very happy. Yeah. And you have never played me like, at least at 6 a.m. You have never played here in Chile. And I, I think Miniki was here once and DJ Yashba two times with Guns N' Roses. So would, would you like to come here someday and do a, a, a great show here? You know, yeah, I've had so many amazing experiences playing around the world and, and uh, playing for fans uh, in every corner of the world. And it's incredibly rewarding. Um, I regret that we haven't been able to, for instance, come there, or, or there's, there's many places that I regret we haven't been able to go play. Um, but as I said, you know, I'm, I'm now at a point where uh, I want to spend my future thinking back, reflecting on my career, and reflecting on the experiences that I've had. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to just forego some of those, those things. I am definitely going to travel to Chile sometime as a as a person, but it may not be, you know, as a musician. It may just be to go and experience uh, experience travel in that way. But as far as 6 a.m. goes, you never know. I just I don't know what the future holds for us um, right now. We feel like with this greatest hits package that we are um, we've put a nice bow on it, and we've got our our entire body of work in a, in a nice collection. Uh, to reflect on, um, but you never know what the future holds. <laughs> yeah. So, and as a musician, in a more personal way, how has it been, have you been through this pandemic? Because, like you know, the, the industry was shut down for over that year, so how has it been for you? For me personally, I've I've weathered it just fine. I'm a very reclusive, private person. I call myself a hermit. <laughs> I... I I don't get out very much anyway, so for me, naturally staying in in my home was natural for me. Um, but it's been heartbreaking, you know, just watching the effect that this pandemic has had on, as you mentioned, not only the industry, which has just been a devastating effect on the industry, all of these people, all of my friends that are out there on on road crews and you know touring crews and things like that they've all their lives have just been disrupted so dramatically that that while for me personally i've managed just fine it's been heartbreaking to to see the effect it's had on other people and boy we can only just hope that we are getting to the tail end of it and that there are no you know serious uh, recurrences of it as we move forward because it really is nice to start seeing these tours happening again, isn't it? You know, just seeing these these tours getting planned and starting to go on YouTube and see bands outperforming again, it's just been wonderful. Yeah, let's hope it's, it can be done very soon again. So, <laughs> is there anything that you would like to say to your fans here in Chile that are waiting for this new album and these new songs? Well, yes, I, I, I want to say thank you, first and foremost, because as you mentioned, we've never been there to play. So the fact that we have support there means the world to us, you know, with us being able to share our music, especially through social media now, since we, since we can't tour everywhere, I'm just grateful that people have, have still found our music and have become fans and, and help share it with other people. So, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, we're, we're grateful for the support that we've gotten over this last decade. And, and we really hope that this, This hits album with the new song will not only uh, satisfy all of you fans that have been with us all this time, but will hopefully introduce us to new fans and, and keep spreading the word. Because in 6 a.m. music, um, 
our message is, is so important, you know, the message of recovery and, and uh, uh, it's just so important, it's so near and dear to our hearts that um, we hope that that message can keep on resonating with people. So thank you, thank you for listening, thank you for sharing, and uh, we really hope that you love this new album. Yeah, okay, man. Thank you so much for your time. Hope to see you someday here as a band or in, so I don't know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. James, so I think... Uh... Okay.